from the ENTJ subreddit. Financial advice. Hi guys, I'm 18. I've got about 3.5K in savings. I can save maybe $1,500 a month. I plan on being a realtor. My question is, how can I have $10 million by the age of 40 and retire? I posted on Reddit Finance. I got negative feedback. They say I'm delusional, that I should aim lower. What a bunch of clowns. Fellow young ENTJ. Welcome to the ENCJ podcast. I'm Dan and ENCJ on the Myers-Briggs personality test. I wanted to make this video today because I can definitely relate to the sentiments of this younger ENTJ. When I was not 18, but 21, I graduated university with a small but significant amount of savings from part-time jobs. And I've since been able to turn that into a US dollar equivalent, $2 million property portfolio. So I wanna give this younger ENTJ and also our subscribers five pieces of advice when it relates to making money and being ambitious as an ENTJ. The first one is, I don't think $10 million is a crazy idea. It's certainly possible, but there's a caveat here. You are very young. $10 million by the age of 40? Yeah, everyone wants that goal, right? The hard part is figuring out precisely how to do so sharpening the focus of your goal. Now I can see that that's what you're asking for in your question. To give you an idea, here's precisely the goal that I'm aiming for. By the age of 40, I plan to own 16 investment properties at an LVR of 50%. They'll have an average value of 250,000 Australian dollars in 2012 dollars each. I will then sell half of these properties and after overheads will yield a 6.5 to 7.5% yield on average allowing me to comfortably retire. Now you might not understand all the language that I've used here because it's specific to property investment and I had to learn a lot about property before I set this goal, which segues quite nicely into the third piece of advice and that is to learn as much as you can from people who are already doing or have done what you're planning to achieve. You see, I started this property journey by listening to a podcast of a high school teacher, just like me, who developed a portfolio of about 20 investment properties and now was comfortably retired, living off the passive income. I listened to about 60, 70 hours of this podcast, read many books on the subjects, attended seminars and networks. And a word of warning here, whenever it comes to money, you have to have your guard up because any information you receive might have an agenda attached to it. There's been so many times I've been to some sort of property event and realized that the information they're giving me is particularly suited for their investment properties that they offer you at the end of the seminar. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they're not, but there are genuine opportunities to learn out there, but they're hard to find. What I suggest you do is find a website like Meetup and attend a networking event where these people who have achieved the goals you're wanting to achieve are at. Get to know them. Be humble. That's my probably most important advice here. It's incredibly confronting to be around someone who's more successful than you, who's more intelligent than you, who knows more than you. But if you approach these people with the right attitude, a willingness to learn and listen, you'll find that they're so willing to help you grow but you'll need to do it on their own terms. Here's what I would suggest. Where are you Wednesday this week for lunch? I'll come to you, we'll go to your favorite place. I'd love to shout you lunch, buy you lunch. I'd love to learn more about how you were able to achieve what you were able to achieve because I wanna do something similar. Man, that person is gonna be, wow, so impressed with your willingness and your humble attitude that they're probably actually gonna take you up on their, their offer. Just remember, Keep your humility in check in these moments. Something that I'd like to challenge you about. Now you call people on these forums clowns. Now I can understand why, because when I've shared some advice to people on similar subreddits, it doesn't seem to be very well received. And I think part of the reason is this ego protection that we've talked about previously. But calling them clowns is not going to leave you in a very healthy place. Jordan Peterson's advice here, I think, really challenged me. And that was, assume that the person you're talking to knows something that you don't. Maybe they do actually have some valuable advice, but you weren't willing to see it. Maybe you could learn from this experience. Why 
are they treating you so abrasively? Is there a way you could change your language or your approach where you would be better received? Or perhaps seeing their own ego projecting itself back to you in a negative way could help you reflect. What areas of your life are you actually doing exactly the same thing? My fourth piece of advice is to determine precisely why you want to be rich. Now, it's not a bad thing to be rich, but it's a bad thing to be rich for the wrong reasons. My dad is an amazing man, and I can't thank him enough for how he raised me and how he helped me become the person I am today. I've probably achieved more financial success now in terms of my investments than my dad, or at least certainly from when he was my age. But I don't think he envies me. In fact, it's probably the other way around. After work, he goes for a bike ride in the forest with his friends. He comes home to the house where he's renovated and built mostly himself, relaxes in the hammock, staring up at the trees, maybe trying to look for a koala in Australia. He goes regularly to caravan parks and holidays with my mum. And they sit by the beach with a glass of wine and just enjoy life. $10 million? What's that if you don't have a family? What's that if you don't have great friends? That's not where life has its meaning and value. And I really thank him for showing me that. Um, Because you can't take this money with you when you die. And you might be able to buy a bunch of brilliant things, but they're not going to make you happy. What is your favorite memory from your childhood? For me, it's being actually at a caravan park with a bunch of friends running on the beach. It wasn't actually that expensive. Understand why you want $10 million. And that involves FI, the most difficult cognitive function for an ENTJ. Thank you very much for watching this video today. If you'd like more ENTJ content, please subscribe to this channel, like this video, maybe put on the bell or something. Help, help me game the YouTube algorithm and get this out to more people if you think that's something that would be helpful to other ENTJs.